Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's August 9, 2013. Let's get straight into the news with our top story. Austin, Texas braces for Al-Qaeda terrorist attack. Now, this is a story exclusive to InfoWars.com. Law enforcement agencies in Texas have received a special threat advisory based on information provided by the Department of Homeland Security, indicating Austin, Texas has been singled out for a terrorist attack on Friday, August 9th, and that also includes Pasadena, California. Infowars.com reported that multi-agency homeland security drills will be conducted in the Austin area over the next few weeks. Now we have the actual document we're going to show you here on screen. This is from the Texas military forces. Unconfirmed reports from the Department of Homeland Security has raised the possibility of random terrorist attacks taking place in Austin, Texas. According to reporting, Austin, Texas plans the Austin group plans to plant backpack style bombs on 6th Street on either the 8th or 9th of August. Now, this is a story that's plagued in controversy because we see this article from KXAN, a local Austin affiliate, and they say the threat letter was sent out by mistake. And it says the Texas military forces says the memo was received by mistake and they later rescinded the memo altogether. So we have a question. You may be saying, you know, well, is the terror threat real? Is it fake? And, you know, I'll leave it to your discernment because we have law enforcement, as far as I know, they're still preparing for this very real terror threat, according to the, according to the document received by Infowars.com. Meanwhile, the local Austin affiliates are saying, no, it's not real. You shouldn't have it and pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. And it ties into this. This goes into the city of Waco. Police are now entering and inspecting homes to prevent crimes. And this guy was trying to, well, he wasn't trying to prevent a crime. He was actually causing a crime, but I won't go into that. You can look at that video on prisonplanet.tv. But it's the police state. It's all over. It's in Austin, Texas. It's in Waco. It's in Colorado, where they're saying that you can't own a gun if you live inside of a, a, a certain apartment complex. And it comes all the way back here to Austin, Texas, where people are very much concerned about these terror threats. So we here at InfoWars hit the streets to see what people thought of this terror threat. A force protection alert was released to the media by accident this week. What they didn't want us to know was that they were letting the Texas military forces know that a possible terrorist threat is set to take place this weekend in Austin on 6th Street. It's one of our busiest streets here in the city. They say that it's uh, going to probably coincide with the end of Ramadan and that it'll be backpack-style bombs. Uh, we are all are quite aware of quite a few instances where there have been drills going on at the same time as terrorist activity. So we're going to go check with Austin citizens and see, do they think this is a false flag? Is this legit? Are they still going to go out and party? Is Al-Qaeda here in Austin? Who knew? What do you think about the uh, possible terror threat that's supposed to happen today on 6th Street? That's a little scary. No concern at all. Why not? Why not? Well, we have officials and law enforcement in place to handle that sort of thing. No, I never heard of first time. That doesn't frighten you? No. Doesn't concern you? Did you hear about it? No. Well, I hope that's not true. Wherever you are nowadays, you have to use some caution and common sense. And like they always say, go with your gut feeling and re report suspicious activity. So it doesn't concern me as much as it would most people. Did you hear about the Department of Homeland Security is going to be performing a lot of uh, terror drills in the next couple weeks in Austin? It's going to be increased military presence? No, I did not. They, they don't want news stations reporting going, look at all the military helicopters and everything so that the news stations know, oh, they're just doing drills. But what if something really does happen? Have you ever heard of um, the FBI doing false flag attacks to create terror events? No, I have not. No. I Operation Gladio, Gulf of Tonkin, we went to war with Vietnam. I did hear about that, and I also heard about it when it happened in London as well, that there was training on that exact same day when the actual event happened. But coincidences happen, so, you know, I think coincidences are coincidences, and they happen inevitably. Uh, today we were running an exercise for a company, and the most peculiar thing was we based our scenario on the simultaneous attacks on the underground and mainline station. So we had to suddenly switch an exercise from fictional to real. Just to get this right, you were actually working today on an exercise that envisioned yes. virtually this scenario. Uh, almost precisely. Drills on the same day that 9-11 happened, it was uh, all the planes um, that were flying, they were doing drills of that exact same scenario of a terror attack taking place by people plying, flying planes into buildings on 9-11. No, I didn't know that. I'm not a real conspiracy theorist. This is an article out of USA 
today, and this report came out on April 19th, 2004. NORAD had drills early like September 11th, Pentagon Trade Center, among imagined targets. They were doing a drill in the exact same area on that day. That's a, that's a fact. That's not a theory. Yeah, I know that's a fact. What do you think? Uh, now I'm thinking they're probably trying to say it's a drill so they don't scare the citizens. What was the school shooting recently, that, that one? Sandy Hook. They were, they were like within 20 miles. Right, they were also doing a drill. Yeah, and that's kind of... Of a school shooter. Exactly, exactly. That was, that's weird. Well, what would you think if you saw a military helicopters and guys jumping out of planes and got tanks coming with guns? Because that's what is happening here over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I'd be getting, I'd be running the other way. That's what would scare me. I really don't, I'm, I don't, it's not my, I'm not concerned. It doesn't bother me. That's out of my hands, you know, that's, I leave it to my military or my president, I guess. All right, well, it seems like a few people were concerned with the terror threat and the homeland security exercises that are going to be taking place in Austin throughout the weekend and over the next couple of weeks. But most people, they're all right with the huge military presence in our town if it means they're going to be safe. For the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. CIA sued on whether top secret information helped Hollywood directors make pro-Obama film. Judicial Watch is suing the CIA in order to obtain the guest list from a June 2011 award ceremony during which former CIA director Leon Panetta revealed top secret information in the presence of Zero Dark Thirty filmmakers in order to help Hollywood directors make a better pro-Obama film. Now keep in mind, if you blow the whistle on police corruption, if you blow the whistle on NSA corruption or military corruption, you're going to go into jail, you're going to be prosecuted, you'll get 90 plus years in prison, you're going to be uh, not allowed to come back into this country, you're going to have to seek asylum in Russia. But if you're Leon Panetta and you just say, hey, I want a better Obama movie, that's perfectly fine. And speaking of movies and how to make movies better, Infowars.com went out to the premiere of Elysium last night, and here's the Infowars crew review. Last night, I took some of the InfoWars crew out to see the midnight showing of the film Elysium, big fan of science fiction. And I like Matt Damon as well. Uh, I've got to say, it's a beautiful film. Uh, it's very, very deep. Uh, it's beautiful in the way it's shot and presented. It's very entertaining. Uh, it is a very ugly film for what it is pushing culturally. Um, in fact, it's only other contemporary in modern history produced here in North America uh, would be Birth of a Nation that came out in 1915, uh, the pro clan film directed by D.W. Griffith. That's what this film is, is a new Birth of a Nation film. That's what the first machete was also about. It's on record that the federal government is helping finance uh, the production uh, of this message uh, that the, uh, quote, Latino nations south of the border 700 million people total uh, have a right to come into the United States under a racial system uh, and take over and attach to that. And liberation theology pushed by the federal government for the last 60 years and the Ford Foundation uh, that uh, basically all whites are bad and Shoot that Hispanics down. are God and the saviors of it. Uh, and that those Hispanics are socialist, communist, collectivist. So they're tagging on the idea of liberty to communism and basing it uh, around racial identity. The only good white person in the entire film is Matt Damon, and he is a white Latino uh, who basically grew up in a Mexican orphanage. It is incredible. Basically, Elysium is America. The blonde-haired, blue-eyed people are the devil. Uh, the Special Forces soldiers are South African. They're, they're the worst people uh, on the planet. They're Afrikaners. Uh, the French are evil. Uh, and it just shows these horrible white families that are the scourge of the earth. This is outrageously racist and is meant to divide so-called whites from other groups of humans on this planet. Uh, and you really see Hollywood, the Justice Department, MSNBC, pushing constant 
uh, racial division, and they want to use racial pride uh, and kind of forge a Hispanic nation around socialism, communism, collectivism, and a anti-gringo uh, uh, type mindset. Amazing. But the racial division and the Hispanic uh, birth of a nation uh, that we're seeing this push is only one part of the divide and conquer. Very sophisticated film. Uh, it points out that there is breakaway civilization by the technocrats. It points out that Homeland Security is putting in a robotic control system uh, over the people and that a technocracy uh, is rising. That's what makes this so dangerous, is that it has a lot of truths in it and that the West, at least the corporations in the West, have been exploiting the third world to a certain extent. So there is a lot of truth in it, but it just brands it in anti-white, uh, as if white people are the source of evil on the planet. You have to remember that it's basically rich white people uh, who are billionaires who are financing this idea because they want to play the different populations off against each other, while the globalists have already formed their corporate Elysiums that are offshore, above the law, with diplomatic immunity where they pay no taxes. And now you've, you've even got Google executives and others saying they're going to form space colonies for the elite uh, off-world as well, and it's Google and groups that are actually pushing uh, this type of division that you see in this film. So the elite are trying to distract us with racial division uh, and even pointing out some of the basic truths that are taking place, but only to capture the minds of the public uh, in a type of 21st century balkanization. Now, to contrast Elysium with an extremely positive film uh, that basically counteracts the messages in it, and that would be Oblivion, where humans, regardless of their color, come together against a technotronic uh, technocracy that has enslaved them and compartmentalized them. Extremely positive, extremely unifying, and I'm surprised to see something positive come out of Hollywood because so much of it is incredibly negative. Uh, still, I have to say Elysium is shot better and is a more powerful story uh, than Oblivion. And that's what's so sad about this is that the propaganda is getting so slick that even when you're conscious of it, uh, you want to give into it because it's so beautifully presented. So uh, hats off to the people that produced it. Uh, you've got a really good chance of creating division and race war uh, and making sure that you can brand uh, collectivism as a form of rebellion to make sure that you destroy any middle class and any independent wealth that you don't control. So uh, you've done it. You are the new birth of a nation, uh, the birth of a Klansman, uh, but this time you're trying to form a Hispanic Ku Klux Klan uh, that will then uh, serve the globalists uh, in their new aims to make sure that uh, America collapses like the rest of the third world. And uh, here is our quick review right after the film, minutes after we walked out last night. All right, folks, uh, Thursday night, we just saw the premiere of Elysium. Rob, do your take. Well, it was another in the line of, of many dystopic futures that we that are facing us if we let the elites win. And what we saw is Obamacare on Earth is not nearly as good as Obamacare and Elysium, where you get everything. You're not exempt like Congress unless you're on exactly. Elysium. Exactly. That's the way it works. So there is definitely a caste system. And everyone with blonde hair is bad. Everyone with blonde hair is bad. Everyone who speaks with a Spanish accent or a Hispanic accent is very good and deserves citizenship. <laughs> uh, so it has that layer. That is but it had right. Jakari made the point it's got Mark of the Beast. That's yeah. the real message. We'll get to that in a minute. But go ahead, McBrain. I was disappointed in the fact that AK-47s in the future suck. Ah, uh, there you go. David Knight. Citizenship fixes everything. Thanks to the Elysium Citizenship Initiative, now you too have the opportunity to apply to be a citizen of Elysium. Free health care, the whole works. Well, that's, that's my whole point when we get to me here in a minute, is that the idea is like America is Elysium, like Shane said yeah. at the start of the movie. But, but, but what's the idea that made America great that all these other countries are imploding? The ideas that made America great are being extincted anyways, so we're collapsing as well. Shakari? Yeah, the thing that really bothered me, they never explained how they got to this future where Earth is all torn down and, you know, they have this big uh, Olympus in the sky being Elysium. But, you know, the thing that really caught my attention was the mark of the beast. They put it on the right wrist. And then, you know, after you, you get the, the mark of the beast and you get the keys to the city, you get the free health care, you get all the, all the goodie bags. And uh, what McBreen said... Uh, the only gun that jammed in the future was an AK-47. That's right. But and in Trendies, they will shoot a gun one time, hit the target, and throw the gun away. 
That's right. So the whole technocracy is you you buy into the transhumanism, you get everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and there's unlimited resources for you. Anybody that has resources stole them. But again, there's a truth to it because they are suppressing technologies. Mm-hmm. And so there's a truth in that the elite wants to actually build an Elysium, but they want to get rid of independent people having wealth because they want to be the only ones that have it. So they're going to use a false culture clash to actually extinct America and any other wealth generating system so they can have the corporate reservations that are above the law. Kit Daniels, InfoWars.com writer. Yep. Uh, what is your take on this? Well, uh, what caught my eye was the sophisticated spy tech, which was seen in the drones, which it was basically normalized. You know, we already have a combination of uh, satellite spy satellites used domestically as well as drones that were used domestically as been revealed by the EFF recently. Well said. And, in fact, you point out that when they have the black ops, they blur out. The sleeper cell running around in the film, there was a immensely detailed footage from space of the surface of people running operations and kidnappings and such. And the sleeper cell would run in, on camera and was totally blurred out. So we were talking about the, the elite uh, siphoning off all the resources, which had, they had plenty for the, the, the people on, on the planet. Spoiler alert, by the way. Sorry. But they were siphoning it off and, and holding it onto their own to keep the worker class under, under thumb and keep them working, keep them producing. And uh, they had all these systems in place to, to really control their, their behavior when the guy was, the hero was talking to the probation officer. And the probation officer was following the program rules. And uh, Matt Damon, Matt Damon, was uh, introducing a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of humor and trying to talk, you know, talk. Uh, Basically, talk to the humanity of, of a... And he was dehumanized with a robot. It was a robot, yeah, and it was, he was dehumanizing him. Elevation and heart rate detected. Wouldn't you like a pill? The robots who arrested him or, or attacked him dehumanized his, his, his whole... And they tried to put him on drugs. Yes, immediately. Right. Absolutely. Immediately offered him drugs. Shane Steiner, uh, final that? word on Elysium. Uh, well, I thought it was, you know, how, how easy it was to, to solve, like, cure cancer and stuff. You just lay in a bed... It goes over the top again, it fixes you, and it just, how easy that is, like, if you had that technology, like, you just, like, it, it, like they were just being jerks, not sharing it with the, with Earth and everything, so. And also how they would shoot, like, an AK-47, and then it would run out of bullets, and they would just throw it down. <laughs> well, and then Matt Damon has his kids in private school, but we shouldn't be able <laughs> that's to. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, overall, very sophisticated movie, great action, though. It oh, was yeah. really good, yes. It was a beautiful movie. Yeah, it beautiful was a beautiful movie. movie. I gotta go see it again just to break it all down, but Very one dystopic. time, one, two, three, Matt Damon. Matt Damon. There you go. So we just get rid of the borders and let everybody, the billions in from around the world, free health care for everybody. Free health care. We're all bankrupt, and the globalists will live on Elysium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So there you go, folks. Well, that's the report on Elysium for Infowars.com. Matt Damon. Yes, these men and their hypnotized followers call this a new order. It is not new, and it is not order. Come on, Alex, it wasn't all that bad. It was just two hours of homeland security, the white devil blowing up immigrants and other brown people. But seriously, you know, this movie has a serious immigration push. It's saying all your problems will be solved if we just open the borders and let everybody flood in. And notice, just as this movie's coming out, they're trying to get the immigration bill passed. 40 to 50 House GOP will back reform on immigration. Gutierrez said many of the Republicans supported of immigration reform don't want to be identified, surprise, surprise, but he insisted they would support the comprehensive immigration reform. He also said only a handful of House Democrats would vote against the legislation. Now, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I have no problem with people entering this country legally, naturalization, joining the military, and so forth, but to say if you sneak past our border guards, we will award you with free health care, with in-state tuition, and all the other goodie bag deals I don't think it's a very good thing for our country, especially considering I can't go to Mexico and get all those free things and goodie bags for myself just by crossing the border, especially if I do it illegally. Now, we'll move to this. Austin votes to extend $60 million smart meter program. 
We found out today it's actually just a contract extension with what some call a big price tag. While the company owns the meters, it doesn't own the software to read them. To extend that contract until 2022, costing $60 million. Some other new products. This might be a time of use type product where you know we have different intervals of time where, where we have different rates. And never mind all the health effects that you can get from smart meters. We've shown you all those reports. You can find those in the archives of PrisonPlanet.tv. Now they're going straight into your pocketbooks, saying that the peak times, at the mornings when you get ready for work, the nights when you come home from work, that's going to be your peak usage time. That's when you're going to hit with the fees the hardest. You know, during the day when you're at work, you're at school, it's not going to be that much. But as soon as you come home, that's when they're really going to stick you. So if you're in the city of Austin, call your council members, call the Austin City Energy, and let them know how you feel about this. Now, we're going to give you a preview of a story that's exclusively on Infowars.com this weekend on PrisonPlanet.tv. And while you're there, stop by, get a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones radio show, the rants, the special reports, and all that right there on PrisonPlanet.tv. But right now, let's go to that teaser for the special report. News of a new crime wave broke this week. A criminal organization admitted that it committed over 5,600 crimes in a year. Violent crimes, drug manufacturing and trafficking, and political corruption. That criminal organization, the FBI. This news article shows the mindset of the FBI, that the law is whatever they say it is. They're not constrained by real law, certainly not by the Constitution. And this is the mindset of every federal agency, whether it's the IRS, the EPA, the NSA, all of them. See the full special report at Prison Planet TV or the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. And we'll end tonight with a quote from Bob Marley. Emancipate yourselves from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our minds. Well, that's the end of our show tonight. And keep in mind, we're not promoting racial division. We're just pointing it out as we see it in the media, on the mainstream, wherever it may be. And it's also in the new InfoWars magazine. Not promoting racial division, just simply pointing it out. This is the new August edition. You can see it has the George Zimmerman, Trayvon Martin cover right there, the divide and conquer meme. So pick that up for your friends and family. You can get them in bulk. So make sure you get the InfoWars magazine. So stay tuned. We'll be back right after this break with my interview with Anthony Gucciardi. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is Anthony Gucciardi. He is an independent journalist and editor of StoryLeak.com. He's going to be talking to us about constitution-free zones. All right, thanks for joining us, Anthony. Hey, thanks a lot. All right, now tell me about these constitutional free zones, you know, because I heard a little bit about this, but I saw the report you did. It was an excellent report. So give us some more detail on this. It's amazing to me that no one's talking about this. The DHS now says it's above the law, it's above the Constitution, and that 197 million citizens mm -hmm. of the United States now live in a constitution-free zone. What that means is the Fourth Amendment doesn't exist, and that any time anyone living in these areas can be searched by the Department of Homeland Security, you know, the same guys behind the T uh, TSA, mm -hmm. can be searched at any time. They can take out your laptop, and they've done it. The ACLU is actually suing them over this. And they can search you within these designated zones because they claim it's the border. It's, the border, and it's, yeah. and it's way past the border. Like, I, I saw a graphic that you had on, and it extends, I believe, all the way up to Houston from Mexico. Yeah, we actually have a graphic provided from the ACLU, who is, again, suing them right now. Mm -hmm. And you can see the 100-mile zone absorbs Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Houston. This is just from the top of my head. Right. And, I mean, it's suffocating. Pretty much the entire state of Florida. The entire the, state, the of entire Florida, state of Florida, yeah. The entire state of Maine, a good portion of Texas where we're at right now. I mean, Austin barely survives this massive quote unquote border. Mm -hmm. And this goes back to the 50s and 60s where they actually do have laws about the border because, you know, we actually have to secure the border, which they're not doing, ironically. Right. Yet now they're saying that Florida is the border. And oceans count as a bordering nation now under the DHS law. Wow. And then they say, by the way, so there's people like the ACLU and others, and I have to give them credit because they mm -hmm. do a lot of good work in this, in this way, but. So they answered them. By law, I think it was 120 days they had to respond by. They respond years later, and they offer this report. We're going to show you here. This report, the Border Searches of Electronic Devices report. And get this. They said, yeah, we'll independently review what's going on. We'll see if it's constitutional. We'll see if it's protecting America. Mm -hmm. They reviewed themselves. Of course. They, just like uh, the Department of Justice, you know, Obama said, you guys can review yourselves and tell me what you think about it. Exactly. So they, they reviewed themselves, and they said, we're acting 100% within the law, and the Constitution doesn't apply to these people because it's on the border. So now, literally, literally, you do not have a Constitution 
if you are in this 100 mile border. And, and think about this though, that's the Fourth Amendment. Mm -hmm. What happens when they want to say you don't have a First Amendment because you're on the border? A Second oh, yeah. Amendment. Oh, they yeah. can declare that at any time. They're just initiating this Fourth Amendment phase, but in years, months, weeks, days, whatever, they could say the First Amendment doesn't apply, the whole Constitution doesn't apply now in these zones, and no one is talking about this besides there is one piece, a Wired article on this that said it. And you guys are hosting yeah, this Yeah, I believe we have that, that article yeah. as well. Exactly. And it's, it's such a horrible thing because we have people on like Pastor Stephen Anderson out of, out of Arizona. And, you know, he goes through and he encounters a lot of checkpoints. And they say, well, this is the immigration checkpoint. He's like, I'm in the United States. Is, am I immigrating somewhere, officer? I thought I was driving down the street to my house in Arizona, not to Mexico. But this is what they do. They stop you. They harass you. And Alex has gone to the border. He did a report. And you can see people free and easy just walking across the border on their horses and so forth. And nobody's stopping them. All law-abiding citizens now are terrorists. Under the regulations of the United States government and the military, we can classify 100% of the entire nation. 100% of everyone watching right now is a terrorist under these laws. I mean, if you pay with cash, mm -hmm. if you are... Wear blue jeans. If you, if you wear blue jeans, if you care about your privacy, you're a terrorist. So, I mean, they're already able to take away your constitutional rights. This is just a really draconian, immediate, blatant way to do it. And it's amazing that right here, right now, this is essentially an exclusive on this. Mm -hmm. No one else is talking about it. The media is not talking about it. And they know what's amazing. It just shows the depth of this because they know that if they talked about this, they would get record ratings, record views, record advertising. Mm -hmm. They would regain credibility. And Gallup polls show that about 20% or less of people actually trust the mainstream media. So they're blowing this off on an agenda. It's not because it's not real. We know it's real. We've seen the DHS reports, the Wired oh, yeah. reports over and over again. So they're blowing it off, and we have to carry it on our shoulders. And it's sad to me that InfoWars right now, Story Leak, are the only ones reporting on this. And we have to carry the weight of all this on our shoulders and do the best we can to present it because the mainstream media, the worthless urine stream media, is not covering it. And speaking of the mainstream media, you have this report on your site as well. Obama was, was recently on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And, you know, uh, Jay Leno says, you know, what do you think about the surveillance state? And he's like, we don't have a surveillance state. We don't in the have United domestic States. spying. It doesn't exist. Yeah. And I, I mean, this man blatantly lies to, to the American people. But, you know, Obama likes to play these word games. They're not wars. They're not attacks. They're kinetic action. So maybe in his mind, he's like, well, maybe this isn't a spy state. Maybe it's a surveillance issue or maybe it's a you know, duck and hide issue, peek in your windows issue, whatever word game he chooses to play. And you had something on your side about that as well. Yeah, well, check that out. The surveillance state, that's important, everything like that. But he goes on and he bashes Russia and says that they're still in a Cold War state and that they're, you know, Putin is, uh, he's the next Hitler. Jay Leno said, you know, I see that he's gathering up the gays and, and he's going to be the next Hitler. I, that's what I've seen with Hitler and Stalin. And they're comparing him to Hitler and everything like that. Meanwhile, Obama is funding, as mm -hmm. Alex has talked about, no one else talks about this. I've written a report on this where they, the Washington Times says that the, the Syrian rebels go around killing Christians and beheading them to screaming barbaric fans who are in a bloodlust. So he is funding these Syrian rebels, going around killing innocents, killing Christians, unless they convert to their mission 100% and pay a massive tax that sends them into bankruptcy over there. Mm -hmm. And then he's saying that Russia are the bad guys for going after the gay community. Oh, yeah. And, and, and also think about the Austin thing, the whole entire issue with the Austin police report on Infowars.com, where it says there's going to be a potential terrorist attack and everything like that. But they, then I mean, they redacted the report saying, no, that wasn't meant for a public consumption. Sure. It's all lies, though, because they also shut down the embassies. Mm -hmm. But they don't tell you about how Obama is funding al-Qaeda through these Syrian rebels, and then al-Qaeda is issuing the threats, and then they act like al-Qaeda are the bad guys. So depending on the mainstream media scope, al-Qaeda are either their, your, our worst enemy or our best friend. So it depends on the propaganda stream of that day. It depends where they want to funnel the anger, the rage, the you know, overall bloodlust of the American people. So we're funding al-Qaeda, and then they're also going around killing all the Christians and everything like that. No one wants to talk about it. It's too hot of an issue. And again, the mainstream media could have record ratings, record advertising, record views if they talked about it, but they don't want to. And then we're funding them, and then we're afraid of them afterwards. Yeah, and that's what I said. We went out to uh, the American Idol tryouts, and I was talking to this lady, and I was explaining it to her. And I guess maybe this is the first time she actually you know, took the time to think about it. And I said, yeah, we're funding the Syrian rebels who are really al-Qaeda. And, and you know, al-Qaeda, that's the reason why they have to pat us down at the airports. That's the reason why they say they have to tap your phone and so forth. And, and she says, well, that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't, don't people have problems with this? So I'm like, well, I have a problem with this, but most of America seems not to care. I get hundreds of emails when I release reports like this, and they say, this isn't happening. How is this possibly happening? I send them the CNN article. 
where it doesn't talk about how they're killing the Christians or anything. It just says, do we need to fund them more? You know, it says Obama's pushing to fund the Syrian rebels with anti-tank weaponry, other missiles. and Other things like they don't want us to have. Obama says we can't have an AK-47. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's sending rounds, guns, everything to the, AK, to the, uh, to the Syrian anti-tank rebels. Anti-tank missiles mm-hmm. that they can use on our tanks. Yeah. That al-Qaeda is getting and then going and fueling the war in Afghanistan by blowing us up. Yeah. And then also the, the issue, though, isn't should we fund them? Because no one even knows who the Syrian rebels are. I bet if we did a poll, like 1% of the nation would even know what we're talking yeah. about. But they don't talk about should we fund them. It's are we funding them enough? Yeah. How, how much is too much? Do they not have enough ammunition to use on Christians and burn down villages and so forth? Evil Assad, though. You know, in, in order to get to Assad, they pretend that they have to go to these Christian villages. And there's videos online. Mm-hmm. They will slice off the little child's head. And they use 14-year-old child soldiers, too. Yeah, we've shown that video of the kid playing with the dynamite. He was running yeah. down the street with the AK. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But th- they, nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about that because that's the real issue. And then he's busy blasting Putin over Snowden and all that. It's all distractionary, even, even though... The media, by the way, they were like, wow, Jay Leno was really hard hitting with his questions. That's that just shows that that's so- what if that's what it takes yeah. for a late night comedian to get on and ask a real question in this country. Th- that's we're pretty far gone. I read an article. It was said that uh, Jay Leno's questions were the hardest ever uh, hit by Obama. Good. I mean, but that's nothing. But yeah, that's his nothing. His questions are worthless, and his answers were, were so amazing that Jay Leno could have easily called him out on any of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's no domestic spying. Snowden's a traitor. You know, Putin's horrible for giving him asylum. It's just, it's all a big joke to me. Meanwhile, he gives, well, maybe we don't use the term asylum, but we have all these people in the Justice Department in his own cabinet committing these uh, horrible crimes, the Benghazi, Fast and Furious, and he's really not holding anybody accountable. He says, yeah, Fast and Furious, go investigate yourself. Uh, wiretapping, go investigate yourself. You could say this. You could say that Russia is having asylum for whistleblowers like Snowden. And the United States is having asylum for CEOs of Monsanto, uh, top Goldman Sachs executives, top banksters that are robbing the country and funding Mexican drug cartels, as admitted by NBC in 2011. So, I mean, we are, we are hosting the criminals of the world. And it's up to the international community now to harbor and help and give asylum to the actual whistleblowers exactly exposing right. what's going on. We're giving asylum to the mafia political cartel. Russia's giving asylum to those exposing the mafia political cartel. Yeah, and that's just how far our country has gone. Now, Anthony, we've come pretty much to the end of our time. I just want to talk briefly. You had an entry in the Operation Paul Revere contest called Disarmed. A great film. Unfortunately, didn't win. But just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so we actually went and we talked to top representatives. We talked to Mike Adams and a bunch of others on gun gun control stats. Not debate, not opinion, gun control stats, hard stats that show 900 plus thousand per year are saved through law-abiding citizens owning firearms. Mm -hmm. That shows that the most of the gun deaths are from gangs and in gun-free zones. That show that Chicago now has more gun murders than those who are dying overseas in Afghanistan. Don't want to talk about that. All this kind of stuff is a 30-minute red pill, if you will, a 30-minute compression of hard-hitting information, an informational bomb, an informational nuke on the whole gun control debate. It's It's all facade. And for those who say that gun deaths are an epidemic, we run around and I ask people, how many people do you think die per year from gun deaths? 100,000, they said, a million, 10 million. You know, rifles only account for about 400 or so, or even 300, I believe. Mm-hmm. So and that's hunting accidents and all that stuff. So we're, and some of it's defense against criminals trying to break in. We're saving hundreds of thousands, around 900-something thousand lives per year with the Second Amendment in full force versus the, you know, couple thousand that die from gang-related, gun-free zone area deaths. And yeah, and that's a very good point, and really enjoy the piece. Now, Anthony, unfortunately, that's the end of our time, but Anthony Gucciardi, StoryLeak.com. And that's going to do it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News.